1MDB has sparked embezzlement and money laundering investigations across One of the biggest corruption countries. scandals the world has ever seen. What may be the biggest financial scam in the history. Of corrupt 1MDB officials treated this public trust as a personal bank account. Follow us as we bring you into the courtroom where the biggest financial scandal in Malaysian history is being heard. By the Malaysian Insight, this is the Najib Razak 1MDB trial, and I'm Patrick Teo. When 1MDB was asked to repatriate funds it held overseas back to Malaysia, its management spun an elaborate tale to mislead the company's board of directors, ultimately resulting in losses running to billions, former company director Ismi Ismail told the court today. Ismi, the prosecution's 13th witness, testified that the board was misled and manipulated by the management to believe that the funds were returning to Malaysia when, in reality, no money came back. <laughs> Najib Razak's 1MDB trial resumed at the Kuala Lumpur High Court today, Tuesday, April 5th. The former Prime Minister is standing trial for graft involving 2.28 billion ringgit in 1MDB funds. He faces 25 charges, 4 for abuse of power and 21 for money laundering, for offences committed between 2011 and 2013. Today, lead defence lawyer Shafi Abdullah zoomed in on the 975 million US dollar loan 1MDB Energy Holdings Limited had obtained from Deutsche Bank. If you recall, the 1MDB management has said at the time that the funds were needed for the purpose of its initial public offering or IPO. However, it was later revealed that the Deutsche Bank loan was disguised as originating from Brazen Sky. 1MDB's British Virgin Islands Incorporated Special Purpose Vehicle, which held 2.3 billion US dollars. Brazen Sky, in fact, did not hold any money, just six promissory notes which were worthless. Shafi produced a chart in court to show how the money from Deutsche Bank moved through several entities only to end up in ABBA PJS Investment Limited or the fake ABBA. If you look at this chart and how the 975 million US dollars was disbursed, it was to mislead the board because the pressure on the management was mounting, the lawyer told the court. This will show that it is not just low tech Joe, but the entire management was working against 1MDB for their own pocket. Joe was providing a means of making money illegally, Shafi said. Referring to the chart, the lawyer then proceeded to walk Ismi through the seven cycles in which the money was siphoned off. Bear with us as we explain how the money moved out of Deutsche Bank only to end up in ABBA. In the first cycle, on September 5, 2014, 110.83 million US dollars was transferred from Deutsche Bank to Lambasa Global Opportunity Fund. From there, 110 million US dollars went to Bridge Global Absolute Returns Fund, SCC. The 110 million US dollars was then transferred to Brazen Sky, and from there, 94 million US dollars moved to 1MDB Global Investment Limited. In the second cycle on October 10, 2014, 377.83 million US dollars was transferred to Lambaza and Lambaza transferred 375 million to Bridge Partners. Bridge Partners in turn transferred 375 million US dollars to Brazen Sky, which then moved the money to 1MDB GIL. Strangely, 1MDB GIL then proceeded to transfer 356 million US dollars to ABBA. This money cycle repeats five more times, with the loan from Deutsche Bank passing through several funds, then 1MDB GIL, only for it to transfer the funds to ABBA. All in all, Brazen Sky, which belonged to 1MDB GIL, only received 94 million US dollars, while ABBA 
pocketed 881 million US dollars. After explaining the money trail, Shafi asked Ismi if 1MDB's former CEO, Mohammed Hazem Abdurrahman, scammed the board and left it at its mercy. Correct, Ismi replied. All this time, it was Joe Lowe in control, correct? So was his crony Kademi Kwabasi and Mohammed Badawi Al Husseini, the lawyer asked. Again, Ismi agreed with the lawyer. Kwabasi was the managing director of Abu Dhabi owned international petroleum investment company IPIC, while Husseini was the chairman of its unit ABA Investments, the real one. The two had orchestrated the fake ABA to misappropriate funds from 1MDB and were named as Joe Lowe's collaborators by the US Department of Justice. Are you surprised the fund was manipulated this way to give an illusion to the board? Shafi continued his questioning. The fact that there is a fake ABBA is already shocking, Ismi told the court. He added that the board never knew the ABBA 1MDB was dealing with was fake. They were under the impression it was the real one in Abu Dhabi, he said. Did the board know what was shown as proceeds that came from Bridge Global was in fact money 1MDB borrowed from Deutsche? Shafi asked. Not at the time, Ismi said. But it is clear the money was manipulated by the management to give the illusion they complied with the direction of the shareholder, Najib in this case, and the board to repatriate 1MDB funds overseas back home, the lawyer asked Ismi. It is very clear that ABBA is a fake entity. What happens below that, the money trail is not material, Ismi answered. The roller coaster is to create the impression that money from the fraudulent fund was coming, but the six promissory notes remain as silly as it was, Shafi concluded. While Shafi's chart did not show the loan from Deutsche Bank ending up in Najib's bank accounts, Lead prosecutor Gopal Sri Ram, in his opening statement, noted that 49 million US dollars ended up in his AmBank account. Money from Vista Equity International Partners Limited Barbados was transferred to Najib's Am Islamic Bank account in five transactions between October and December 2014. Najib received a further 4.1 million ringgit in June of the same year from BlackRock Commodities Global Limited, bringing the total received to 49 million ringgit. Both Vista Equity and BlackRock Commodities are companies owned and controlled by Eric Tan, a trusted associate of Joe Lowe. Shafi ended his questioning for the day, and Ismi will return to the stand tomorrow. Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by the Malaysian Insight. It was written by Revati Supramaniam and I'm Patrick Teo.